So in this session, we are going to look at how an uh, integrated API supply chain helps FinServe ecosystems uh, to thrive and build a personalized uh, consumer experience. And this personalized experience uh, makes the next generation of banking. Okay, um, so basically I want to first uh, look at what it really means by digital transformation in uh, banking space. Uh, then I want to discuss how a bank can adopt and transform uh, itself to the way people are doing banking. Uh, then I want to go into details how a bank can provide value exposing their internal and partner capabilities as APIs and how they could provide value on data, which, uh, which is a treasure trove uh, that banks are sitting on. Uh, then I want to introduce this uh, new concept called Bank Experience Canvas, uh, which we called as BEC, uh, a new way of um, you know, providing uh, a personalized experience to your customers, a new way of banking. Um, so I want to bring this uh, interesting quote by Amit uh, from Google Cloud. Uh, the think of digital transformation as a state of uh, perpetual agility, always ready to evolve for whatever customers want next. Um, so uh, digital transformation is not just a tool or a technique. It's a way of life. Uh, you need to transform your goals, the culture the, and the platform uh, to provide a better experience for your customers. Uh, and to attract new customers and as well as keep your existing customers. Um, you should be able to innovate, innovate in your space and, and come up with innovative uh, ideas of engaging your customers. Um, as you can see, like the digital transformation, the word or the term digital transformation is, um, is an overused and an often abused term. Uh, it is not about spending uh, half a million dollars on a brand new digital transformation platform. Uh, it's not. So it's about whether the, uh, the company, the company philosophy uh, recognizes the fact that uh, organization has to transform itself to an agile ecosystem and, and, and how soon you can understand customers and adapt to their needs uh, makes the difference. Um, you know, as you all know, banks compete in an overcrowded and you know intensely competitive market. Uh, they have thin uh, profit margins, so you need to transform your business philosophy, your organization culture, your ecosystems, and the platforms and the tools. Um, you know, come last. Um, you have to look at how you can transform your organization, how and how you. Think about your interaction with the customers first, and then, then only you can uh, look at the platforms and tools, whether they provide the adequate um, agility within your um, organization. So it all starts with a cultural transformation um, and organizational change. Um, that's how uh, we want to um, build digital transformation in a, in a bank or in an organization. Um, see a walking chameleon. So um, chameleons are famous for their ability to quickly change their skin, uh, skin color to the surrounding environment. Uh, it, can, it can first understand the visual organization of the surrounding and quickly change its color pigmentation accordingly. Banks should be able to adapt to their business environment as, as rabbit as chameleons. So uh, in order to do that, uh, the banks need to look at how consumers interact with their existing products, how they basically work with their products and what are their uh, needs and how they um, basically use those products in, in meeting their needs. Um, so, so you need to look at the behavior of um, the consumers and as well as the competition uh, around your uh, domain. So banks need to reimagine the experience they provide to the customers. Um, when I say uh, customers, it includes the, uh, the general customers like uh, me and you and, and um, you know, small and medium organizations, large corporate and, and governments. 
so as an example, uh, banks can provide uh, specialized lending products for the oil companies and oil research organizations in uh, shale oil basins from Texas to Wyoming, which are hit by reduced oil prices. And how, you, how quick you can assemble a product and its ability to uh, come up with a new product or a new recipe uh, puts you in front of the, um, the competition. And, and, and you can off, add value uh, through partners. You don't need to, like, uh, so you, you may have some capabilities, some, uh, you know, service capabilities within the bank, which we have built. And you can quickly add value by building a partner ecosystem around you. So the partners add value on top of your existing capabilities. And um, is the banks, um, coming out of their you know, standard uh, or the traditional silos and uh, extending their reach uh, across domains like uh, moving out of banking and, and tapping energy, telcos, travel and providing you know, uh, value added services. And, and um, if you look at the banks, banks gather a lot of information about the transactions, and the consumer behavior, and, and, and things like that. So you can transform that data that you gather into value and uh, understand the patterns and provide additional um, you know, value added services and as well as improve how you market your products, how you engage with, with your customers. So uh, the, by doing these things, you can adapt and differentiate yourself. Uh, you can quickly adapt to your market um, you know, changes and how your customers uh, work with your products. Um, so one of the thing is uh, the how quick you can compose a value. So you have uh, multiple discrete service capability within your bank, and it might be coming from your internal organizations, uh, or it might be coming from your partner. And how quick you can compose these capabilities and how quick you can build value, like the package business capabilities and provide to your customers, uh, you know, make your differentiation. So as you can see, you can, you know, uh, take, you know, pieces, the colorful pieces and create a mosaic art like this. So how quick you can compose value, uh, create the differentiation in the market. Um, so if you look at how we can build value, um, uh, so these discrete service capabilities are exposed by APIs. And um, uh, this diagram shows you how you can provide value addition on your API space. So you may have a set of APIs um, that, that, that are compliant with uh, uh, compliance uh, standards like you know, financial data exchange APIs standards. And what you can do is you can add additional attributes and resources on top of your uh, standard compliant APIs. And then um, you can attach additional APIs on top of the um, existing standard FDX, FDX APIs. And you can build additional protocol support, like support for eventing on, on top of your APIs. And this make the um, you know, ability of fintechs and partners and developers to use your APIs in different ways. And they, they will aggregate those APIs, they will build products around those APIs um, that will help uh, value addition on top of your existing API space. And of course, the monetization capabilities, like you know, ability to create different monetization models will add value because um, you know, different consumers would uh, would have different ways of using your APIs and uh, consumption patterns. So you need to have a monetization models that are wide enough to cover all of these um, scenarios. Uh, then comes the most valuable asset that you have, the data. So um, as an example, uh, the bank has a lot of transactional information that is stored in their data warehouses. So this is an example of a single transaction. So saying a transaction has an ID, which is unique to the bank. Uh, transaction is identified by a type, 
Um, it can be a direct debit, it can be a transfer, it can be a payment. And um, the transaction has a description, it has a biller's code, it has a merchant code, and as well as uh, different timestamps like you know, value date, posting date, uh, execution date. So if you remove the personally, personally identifiable data from these transactions and de-identify, you get a voluntary data set. And uh, when you gather this data set across a uh, time period, you can see the consumer behavior patterns, uh, investment patterns, the choices that people make, uh, the different relationships. By understanding these patterns, um, you can use those uh, patterns in your real-time credit scoring, smart lending, and uh, wealth management products. You can fine-tune the way you approach your customers. And of course, you can uh, expose these um, um, in different patterns and, and knowledge that you gather on data as again as API. So data becomes an API again. So this is the value additions that you can make on data space. So this is a good example of uh, a value addition that have made by uh, Bank of Bilboa from Spain. Uh, they have uh, looked at the transactions that uh, they gather from uh, their credit card, uh, debit card, or the card payment, uh, card payments, and then post systems. Um, so they have gathered uh, these uh, transactional information and they provide uh, different data sets as an API. So it is called a pay stats API. So they categorize, uh, categorize uh, the patterns. Uh, the age, the, the, the spending patterns, the geographical uh, distribution of these spending patterns. Uh, so they provide that information through Paysets API, which is a premium API, and it is monetized. So uh, it's, it's a good example of how you can um, use your data as an API and, and build premium APIs. So, so likewise, when you add value on these different uh, spaces like data space and APS space. Um, uh, if you, so, so it's based on your internal capabilities, but if you can build an ecosystem around you, um, you can increase the service portfolio and, and, and be ready for the future. So if you can, uh, so if you look at this, like the, this is the internal banking capabilities and, and value that you can provide. Um, and you can build uh, the, you can provide APIs and capabilities to build personal finance management systems, you know, for real time analytics. You can build smart lending products. You can build investment management products, payments, mobile banking. And you can extend uh, using this ecosystem, you can extend these capabilities into, you know, new products like, you know, payday lending, you know, um, P2P lending, cash and go products. So the additional capabilities are coming from the ecosystem that you are building around the bank. And the APIs and the integration capabilities provide that um, you know, necessary environment to build the ecosystem. So it, it, it reduces the friction uh, to interact with your capability. Uh, that's what the bank should uh, do. It should create an ecosystem, an environment to build uh, additional capabilities using partners. So uh, a good example is Wells Fargo API Gateway. So it, it provides a lot of you know, APIs in, that is categorized into different um, functional domains and, and provide seamless experience in onboarding and using those APIs, testing them and, and, and provide value. So banks are moving into providing these uh, digital assets as APIs and provide API gateways and developer portals and, and, and building that interaction. Um, now, traditionally banks has been providing, you know, banking products like, you know, savings, uh, to term deposits, loans and things like that. Now we see the API products coming onto the uh, that that standard product portfolio. So this is an example from uh, ABN Amro. 
Um, so they, they provide API products uh, uh, additional to their standard uh, banking product. Um, so again, uh, from uh, Bank of Bilbao from Spain, so they provide the concept called embeddable banking components into your business. So they provide SDKs and agents that you can uh, incorporate into your existing systems that you is you use in the business. And those through those agents, it um, these systems can interact with the bank uh, directly. You uh, interact with the accounts, uh, your you know receivables, your you know, payments, and things like that. So that integration into the bank is provided uh, into your business. Um, so this is where the uh, banks are heading. So uh, payments are a, a very interesting domain in banking. Uh, so with these open banking initiatives, uh, there are new ways of making and payment. Uh, this diagram shows you a way of um, you know uh, doing a payment uh, frictionless using a uh, single euro payment area um, payment in infrastructure so the bank can directly perform a payment transaction to a local bank or, or a foreign bank uh, when i say a foreign bank this is within the european region so um, you know you don't need to go through card systems or card payment network uh, this payment transaction you uses the standardized payment interaction by the open banking PSD2 uh, OB UK um, um, you know standards and perform a payment transaction directly from pay a bank account to pay a bank account. So this this is a frictional payment channel that is provided by the uh, you know um, open banking standards. Uh, because open banking standards are uh, started in Europe and we see a uh, lot of traction. In the US, uh, there's no uh, you know, standards like uh, PS2 that is seen in Europe, but uh, there are standards coming in. Uh, mostly the uh, open banking, like the interaction is market driven in the US. Um, so um, yeah, so with these standards coming in, so you have a way of doing payments uh, frictionless. And all of these capabilities comes with the API capability and the integration capability that you have. So uh, I want to bring this, um, um, uh, the statement, uh, disruptor don't set out to beat you at your own game. They change the rules. Um, so we, we have been looking at what uh, capabilities that banks can provide through APIs and you know that data space. Uh, what uh, the uh, the banks are currently doing, like you know bringing API products and things like that. But how do we change the rules? How do we change how we do banking? Uh, that's what I want to introduce uh, uh, with this. And we have come up with a new concept called banking experience canvas. It is a new way of, um, you know, interacting with your customers or uh, a new way of banking. Um, so this banking experience canvas is based on multiple fundamental building blocks, concepts. Um, if you look at what are those like, um, so there are concepts uh, like values to the experience and behavior. Uh, so in, 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 in banking experience canvas, canvas, what we have is a single value store. So you don't have like saving accounts, um, you know, checking accounts, everyday accounts, like, you know, multiple accounts. You don't have. What you have is a single value store where you accumulate your value. Uh, it can be money, it can be currency, or it can be a precious metal, or it can be something else. Um, it's a it's a way of storing value, and what you do is you break that value store into multiple jars or multiple ports or buckets, and when you separate those jars, you can define how you separate that um, you know jar or a pot. It can be based on dynamic rules like you know um, please um, separate or create a jar uh, twenty percent of my income or uh, um, uh, convert $200 in, into this jar, something like that. Or it can be statically defined. 
And when you create this jar or a, a pot, you can assign an experience on top of this uh, pot or the jar. So it can be your investment experience, or it can be your everyday, um, you know, um, you know, expenses. It can be bills that you are paying. It can be expenses, the daily, daily, you know, daily run that you are doing. So each experience is different. Uh, investment investment experience is different from your, you know, day to do day to day transactions. You define how you invest, uh, what type of risk that you are taking. You know, higher risk investments, low risk investments, things like that. And on this, let's say, if you're looking at looking at day to day expenses, then you build a behavior around that experience. So it's specific to you. So in here, what happens is you define the, how you interact with your bank or how do you bank, how do you manage your value. Um, the bank does come up with set of uh, products and, and rules, how to use those products. You build your own experience, how you do banking. So um, this is a way of illustrating how the banking experience can be would be uh, or how how the consumer would interact with uh, banking experience canvas so as you can see you have a service palette which provides different uh, services and activities that, that the bank provide and as well as uh, bank can provide additional capabilities on top of their standard capabilities uh, using the ecosystem and then what you do is you have the value store uh, the value store is identified by it can be, um, you know, international um, banking account number, or it can be a, something like a, uh, you know, username like, you know, uh, something like this, or it can be a QR code, uh, or it can be something else. So it can be a biometric identification as well. So each of these identities specifically identify your values too. So you can provide these identities to your um, uh, to people that. Um, you know, send your money, and it can be salary, it can be a payment, it can be a um, something else. And what you do is you assemble uh, experience. So uh, in in this, what you have done is you have defined a rule saying that transfer four hundred dollars into uh, savings, and the goal is to save ten thousand dollars by the by Q for twenty twenty. So this is the experience that you're building, a saving experience. Likewise, so what you do is you drag and drop these different capabilities into the canvas and you build the experience. So the rule, so you're dragging a rule into the canvas and building the, um, you know, uh, uh, the user experience. So this is a uh, 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 day-to-day, uh, sorry, uh, everyday experience where you're you're paying a bill to your uh, gas provider pacific gas and um, uh, on this canvas you can use templates so there will be pre-built templates so you don't need to build this from the scratch you will use templates and as well as you will have a chat bot uh, available that you can you know interact with the chat bot and build the same 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 experience so there are there are different ways of interacting with this canvas the important thing is that we provide uh, the consumer the freedom of choosing their own behavior, the financial behavior, and 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 uh, more interactive way of you know in, uh, in integrating into a bank. And additionally, you can provide you know uh, uh, capabilities or services outside of the traditional bank in a way, like travel. So you you can drag and drop and build your travel experience and and things like that. Um, so this is a, a, an illustration of how you can build a banking experience. Now let's look at how we can build uh, this kind of behavior to a business. So this is a canvas for business. And you can think, um, so let's say a, a, a bakery, right? So a bakery, um, uh, when you're doing a bakery, so you, have, you will be using multiple systems. You need to have a cash flow, flow management system. Uh, you need to have some kind of a ERP accounting and you might um, have set up reward uh, rewarding mechanisms you know um, the cards and you had to have an inventory 
So what bank can provide is, uh, so you'll have a bank, uh, the business account within the bank. And um, so it is, uh, the business account is similar to the value store. And will the bank provide different services as packaged business capabilities? And the bank can provide embedded banking, like embedded components that the business can build into their systems. And they interact with the bank directly through APIs and other mechanisms. And bank can provide uh, retail intelligence back to the business. And, and business can you know, uh, tune itself based on how the customers interact uh, with, with these systems and things like that. So these are the capabilities that banks can provide on the business. Um, so business can build um, their own canvas, their own experience based on the services that are available. So this is the business banking experience. And um, so let's look at how we, we could enable this, this behavior, this new way of interacting with your consumers and you know, uh, businesses. So this is the canvas that you have. And as you can see, uh, the canvas is very dynamic interface. So we need to have an event bus and, and, and a kind of uh, service mesh, which exposes different services uh, as microservices. So uh, you may remember that there was a service pellet. So these services are, uh, can be coming from the bank, like the internal capabilities, or it can be coming from your partner. So you need to have a, a, a good API marketplace or a developer portal, which provide that capability of you know, your partners to be onboarded and you know, build APIs, expose their APIs and, and things like that. And um, you know, bank can have that API catalog and bank can build API products and attach that to the service pillar. And you need to have eventing capabilities, you know, workflows. Like if you look at the experience that you're building on the canvas, this is the, it actually a workflow. So you, do, you need to have real time analytics. You need to have identity capabilities. Um, so you need to have multi-factor adaptive and identity federation capability. Uh, you need to have machine learning capabilities because uh, we expect this canvas to learn from your interactions and provide value. Um, so uh, we get a lot of information on this canvas and it will be a, uh, something like a persona driven warehouse and we need to expose a semantic business layer to the canvas. So all of these, cap if you look at all of these capabilities, it includes APIs, integration, identity and analytics. WSO2 provides all of these capabilities because what WSO2 provides is a platform. It has multiple capabilities. You can plug and play. You can choose what you want and you know, gradually build your platform in an iterative architecture. So Canvas, yes, this is coming from, th these are the new concepts, uh, new learnings that we, have, we are bringing in. We bring the platform and as well as you know, strategic uh, capabilities, consulting capabilities to provide you value. So as a full, as a one package. Um, so if you look at uh, WS2 uh, financial solutions uh, team, it provides you the capability of transforming your bank into a next generation bank, and and um, you know make your ecosystem agile and and. and be able to compete with your, uh, uh, you know, be ahead of your competition. So you, uh, we see this journey as a navigation path and with waypoints. So usually what happens is WS2 engaged uh, with requirements and we do design workshops to identify the, the, the platforms of the solution that you want to build. And then we uh, help you in transforming your internal culture uh, because you need to transform the culture, the philosophy in order to become agile bank. And additionally, we provide regulator alignment through open banking capabilities that we have. And as well as we provide partner alignment uh, to build your ecosystem around your bank. Then we help in uh, implementations and we help in you know, reciprocal collaboration between uh, the banks that we work with. 
So we introduce new banks and new way of uh, you know banking with you. So we create a community around our customers. So that's what we uh, bring in the reciprocal cooperation. Of we provide testing capabilities and go live uh, capability. And the most important thing is we provide uh, the beyond compliance of the additional capabilities or value additions that you can build. And we propel you to become a bank for a new way of banking and making uh, uh, banking uh, enjoyable, enjoyable to your customers. So this that's what we provide as WSU2. We provide platforms, the KTA tools and technologies, and as well as uh, thought leadership in the space. Um, yeah, so um, this is uh, what I want to cover in the um, session.